الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحد خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة ولم يخشى إلا الله فعسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن أستقوا الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثات بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد <coughs> All thanks and praises due to Allah We seek His help and forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves And <coughs> we seek refuge in Allah from the evil um, from, our evil con- from the consequences of our evil deeds <coughs> Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided ha- Will never be led astray And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has led astray She'll never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. <coughs> Allah the Exalted has said, O you who have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. And Allah the Exalted said, O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds and forgive your sins and whomsoever Allah and whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger shall has certainly attained a great attainment. And Allah the Exalted said, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. <coughs> and fear Allah through whom you have asked one another and through the wombs. Indeed Allah is over is ever over you an observer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Tawbah, The mosques of Allah shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah in the last day, and by those who perform as salah, and for by those who give zakat. And fear none but Allah, it is they who are expected to be on the true guidance. My brothers and sisters, I wanted to, for this khutbah, let's talk about a place where a certain setting, a place, an environment where many of us, whether it be youth or elders, we have we sometimes lose a connection with it, or sometimes we um, steer away from this place. And it's a place that is very critical and important in our lives as Muslims. And this place that I am referring to is the masjid, the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And <clears throat> I just wanted to, you know, Talk about talk a little about you know how nowadays when we lose we we sort of sort of treat the masjid as you know a place of competition where a masjid's success is based off of how nice it looks or how pretty it is or how nicely decorated it is or uh, the success of a masjid is only determined by you know a certain type of you know community that's there certain type of culture that exists in the masjid and if that culture is in the masjid then it's successful and if, if that type of culture is not is missing in the masjid then the masjid is not successful and we have to go somewhere else we have to look to somewhere else we have to go to a different masjid we cannot stay in this masjid 
or we have the problems of you know, bigotry and racism that occur in Masajid or for example competition and it's these types of things which you know we look to nowadays in a masjid when looking back at the at the first at, at the masjid of the Prophet in, in Medina we look to his masjid we look at how it was built it literally like the roof of it was just date the, the stalks of date trees the stalks of trees that was the roof and when they would pray water would drip down and when they would go into sujood and come back up, mud would be dripping from their faces. But yet nowadays we have to have the, you know, in order for a masjid to be successful, everything has to be, you know, the nicest decorations. And if it's not, then we cannot be in this masjid, we have to go to a different masjid. And yet we have, we have to look more at the quality of the masjid, the quality of the community, the quality and the character of the people in the community, rather than looking at just, you know, the physical beauty of it, or the physical, or the physical uh, aspect of it, or the worldly aspect of the material aspect of the masjid. We look at the masajid, and nowadays we see that whenever a youth enters the masjid, whenever a young person enters the masjid, and they're not wearing a, a thob or a kufi, they are they are yelled at, and they are driven away from the masjid instead of you know, instead of being welcomed, instead of being given a kind warm, a kind warm salam or a kind uh, and a warm hug so it's these types of things that you know problems that ha we have nowadays and are in the mosques and yet the people who come to the mosques they they claim from themselves that yes we maintain the masajid of Allah when you look at the ayah in Surah, in surah At-Tawbah إِنَّمَا يَعْمَرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ the mosques of Allah are maintained only by those, only by those who, in the man amana billahi wa liyawm al-akhir, that the mosques of Allah shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah on the last day. And the word maintain, you know, it doesn't just mean, oh, I just come for, for salat, that's it. I just come for dhuhr and asr prayer and, you know, I maintain the mosque. But more maintaining, when we apply it in today's definition, it has to be more of, I take care of the masjid, take care of the community. You know, not only do I just come for the prayers, but I also come, come for the activities. I come and I help out. I, I donate often to the masjid. And not just donate money, but donate my time to come and help the masjid. Physically. Not just with, you know, not just with money. But you come and actually put in action. You put in action into, you know, whatever meetings or events come in. And you help out with everyone. Not just, you know not just ignoring the youth but you also not just one sector of the masjid but you also help out with everyone with all age groups whether they be old or they be young and this is what's what's meant by the people who are maintaining the mosques of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what is meant by the ayah innama ya'muru masajid Allah man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir it's not just someone who comes you know on a daily basis for asr prayer and that's it the masjid is it is a place of prayer, but it's not just a place of prayer. It's not only that. And that we have this problem with people who, you know, just because they come to the, the prayers, just because they attend, to every, attend for every single salah, they think that they run the place and that whenever another person who they, doesn't usually come, they, who wants to help out, you know, they act like they can run the place and they act and then they get that's that then that's when they start thinking of themselves as oh I'm important and we sh and it's very you know it's something which we need to work on ourselves uh, an, an aspect of humility that we need to have in ourselves that this is not just my the mosque my mosque this is the mosque of the community the mosque of Allah masajid of Allah so we need to we need to work on ourselves in a way to we ask we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you know allow our hearts to be humble and to make our you know, actions be humble, protect us from arrogance and pride. And one of the other things that I wanted to point out was the famous hadith of um, Anas ibn Malik. When he said that the hour will not be established until the people compete in the building of Masajid. And I just wanted to point out that, <clears throat> like I said, we have a problem nowadays with the competition. With, you know, this masjid looks nicer, we go to this masjid. Even though that masjid is 40 minutes away, yet we have a masjid that's 5 minutes away. And just because it's not as big enough, or just because the community is not, you know, to our liking, 
then is not a certain type, then we, we, we don't go to the masjid that's closer to our, to, our, to our homes. This is something we need to take into, into mind, that the masajid of Allah is not built for competition. It's not built to make it into the prettiest. You can have the most beautiful masjid, you know, marble plating on everywhere, the nicest musalla, the biggest musalla, but yet for Fajr you only have one line. For Maghrib you only have one saf, one line. And yet your masjid cost 50 million dollars to make, and yet you only have one line for salah, when it comes time for salah. When, you come, when it comes to the classes, there's only one or two kids when it comes to the classes for the Islamic school. So it's something we need to take, in, take into effect that what matters most is the quality of the community. Not the quantity, not the looks, not the material aspects. And that's something if we ever want to work on in our masjid, the thing, whenever we want to put action forward, always focus on the community. The community and the quality of the community is the most important thing. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow for this masjid and all other masajid in, our commu- in, our, in, this, in this area and in the United States to flourish, for our communities to flourish and our, to, to, um, to be successful. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our communities beautiful and welcoming communities. Ameen. Qul qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah liya wa lakum li sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa al-ghafur. You know, there was um, two brothers in Mecca that they had one of their, their mother. There were two bank owners in Mecca and their mother passed away. And for their mother, in the honor of her name, they built her a mosque in her name because she passed away. Now just think about this for a second, that these brothers, that, ev- that they built, and it's a very big mosque too, mashallah. But, in her, but think about it for a second, how much reward these brothers are getting. For every person who enters this masjid, every single person who makes sujood, that, you know, these brothers will be building, will be building such a good investment for themselves in the, fu- in the akhirah. How much reward they're getting. And for us, we can also do the same. We can also, you know, build our masajid. And we don't need to invest millions and millions each person. You can build your masjid by attending it regularly for prayers. You can build your masjid by giving a, by giving a small, you know, amount of food for each potluck. You can build your masjid by involving yourself in helping and volunteering in the community events, community, the youth events, the youth, um, the community events. You can build this masjid by building a community. Building a masjid does not just mean, oh, I invested millions into it. That is one way, but it's not the only way. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to realize, to allow us to, you know, open our hearts, open our minds, and to how to, we can build our masajid and allow us, each and every single one of, us, one of us, to build our masajid, you know, in a way that will be accepting, accept, accepting and pleasing to Him. And one of the other things, you know, when we look at the masajid, the people who come, usually it's not, you know, the same person who comes. Usually we see a new face in the masjid. When a person usually comes to the masjid, they realize someone who's new, someone who's a new face. And, you know, not every single person who comes into the masjid will be someone who is, you know, a saint. And no, actually no one who comes into the masjid is saying Every single person, whether it be a regular person who comes to the masjid or even the imam who comes to the masjid, the imam of the masjid. We're all sinners that come to the masjid. So it makes, none of us are different when we come into the masjid. So it really, you know, it really doesn't make sense when someone, a new face walks into the masjid and they're not wearing a thobe or a kufi and they're wearing, you know, jeans, especially for the youth, and they're wearing jeans and yet they are yelled at, and yet they are told, why did you, you come into the masjid? You know, when you look at the life of the Prophet wasallam, you see him going up to the youth, and it's actually uh, to Anas bin Malik, he was one of the youngest, the young small companions. 
and he was playing with his friends and you would see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would himself go to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh, and his friends who were playing around and he would go and say salam to them and yet nowadays we have <coughs> you know and uh, the elderly people in the masjid screaming at the youth because they come into the masjid and they aren't wearing a kufi or they're not wearing you know or their their shorts are too short you know it, it's really sad when we, this type of stuff happens because the per that person will never return back to the masjid they will be scared away from the masjid you know we as people should realize you know that this 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 person who comes into the masjid and this person who walks inside and enters the masjid they could be anywhere right now they could be at a nightclub they could be you know at the mall but yet they decided to come to the masjid and that is the first thing that should be coming out of my masjid alhamdulillah that this person came to the masjid and we should go and give them a warm salam regardless of what they're wearing of how they're dressed if they have an earring or they have a nose piercing it doesn't matter the fact, the fact that this person came into the masjid and entered into the masjid into the masjid of Allah into the house of Allah should be just enough for us to go and give them a warm salam a warm smile and make them feel welcomed but yet we have not we, instead of that nowadays because out of ignorance and because of lack of manners we judge them instantly and we make them feel bad and then we drive them away and then never enter the masjid again and then, and then we are the ones ourselves asking why aren't there any youth coming into the masjid anymore and the entire time it is because of our lack of manners and our ignorance that's the reason why the youth are driven away from the masjid it's because we don't, our, we don't look at ourselves we, look at all, we always have to look at others so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to <coughs> grant us beautiful manners and to cleanse our hearts and protect us from ignorance, protect us from lack of manners. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow for the youth to enter the masjid and allow for the youth programs and youth to develop into successful you know, youth and leaders for the ummah. I mean, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد <تصفيق> اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عني أقيم أقيم الصلاة